there was some success, and actually the numbers were consistent throughout the country, that two-thirds of the patient did relatively well with TMJ surgery over the long haul, but a full one-third of the patients, no matter who the surgeon was, no matter what surgery was performed, a third of the patients would be back within six months to two years with these same, with these same complaints and symptoms. And I reached the point in 2014 after experiencing this and, and using, as my experience, 2,000 surgical procedures that I could not talk to, confront a patient and look at her in the eye and say, I'm going to fix you like I could with any other kind of surgical procedure that I performed, whether it be cancer reconstruction, cleft lip and cleft palate, microneural reconstruction, uh, reconstruction of face, facial growth problems. We call that orthognathic surgery. And I could define, expect, and, and tell the patients exactly what would happen with high, high predictability. But with TMD problems, temporomandibular joint disorder problems, it was much less predictable. And frankly, a third of the patients would be back within six months to a year with the same symptoms. And that was not good enough. And I could not look at a female patient and say, I'm going to fix you knowing that they would be back within a year or two with the same symptoms. At that point, I decided, I decided that I wasn't going to do any more TMJ surgery and that I was going to try to figure out what was really going on with this problem. We already knew that the general dentist didn't know what to do. I've talked about that many times. They were taught in dental school to make a night guard, basically a, a horseshoe thing that went over the surfaces of the teeth to protect the teeth, but did nothing for the treatment of TMD, although the claims to this very day are out there routinely that night guards treat TM, 